Collider family, Collider TV talk fans, Josh McCuga here. We're back. Uh, it's a huge day in the history of television. Uh, you make you're like the mash finale, the end of Sopranos when it just went to black. Spoiler alert! And the the season finale of Game of Thrones when Danny finally sat on the throne and the dragons lit the entire world on fire. That's not a spoiler. I don't even know if that's true. I'm just saying things out loud. Josh McCuga here. Uh, Collider TV talk is back. We're back. All the tweets worked. Uh, your your hard work, dedication to the 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 genre, the medium of television. We're here. My co-host, who was only on one episode of Collider TV Talk back in the day, too. Did I even do it? You did TV Talk one time. I know you did. I'm all right. For sure. Uh, his name is Thad Williams. You guys know him as the commissioner. Thad, welcome to hey, the show. Happy to be here. Long yeah. time, first time. <laughs> uh, maybe not first time. Apparently, I was on the show at one point, but I don't remember that. I think you may have just come in for like a small bit of something, very, right? It's very possible. And we, we Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, and we did, and we did a, uh, we did, we've done some stuff before. We've we been, absolutely have. We've yeah. been working, we've been working together for a while. Crazy enough, back uh, Guilty Movie Pleasures Day, you came on a couple times. Oh, yeah. back that old podcast. I think Ben Begley's still hosting that. Um, but we're here. It's Clatter TV talking. A lot of people, uh, people are probably asking, where's Sinead? Where's David? Where's Emma? Where's Sasha Pearl Raver? Well, uh, right now. This is the show. You're listening. It's Thad and myself. We will have people call in. Yep. We will have guests come in the show, uh, Sinead and Emma Fife. We will have David Griffin call in if he can. Unfortunately, David Griffin is working full-time at IGN. Yes, he has a really good job now. Fantastic and, job. And and he's running the TV department there, I He's believe, a streaming or? editor for yeah. IGN. Yes. So uh, he's, such a, he's so good at his job. I'll tell you this David Griffin story. I went to Comic-Con for one night this year. We hosted an amazing show. Myself, Ken, Mark Ellis, a bunch of other fine comedians. And David Griffin, that same night, the IGN party was going on. And I texted David. I said, hey, are you going to be at the IGN party? I'm, I'm, I'll stop by at the show to say, hey. He said, no, I have to watch Jack Ryan and write a review. So that Saturday night, the <laughs> He huge, got to watch Jack Ryan? He's already seen it. He, and he loved it. He said it was great. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, there was a review up on Collider 2 as well. Yes. And I saw uh, Vinny Mancuso, who I believe is moving out to L.A. So he could be a regular contributor here on TV yes, Talk. It, yes, he is. He saw American Vandal Season 2 and loved it. The article I did, was great. I did see that. I was very excited yeah. to see that. Uh, so, um, so David Griffin says, no, but you can use my name at the door. <laughs> we all know David Griffin is a black gentleman. I am with uh, a very large beard, with a large beard. And, and I'm a Caucasian gentleman from Pittsburgh. And I went up there and I said, yeah, my name's David Griffin. They said, ah, you're not on the list. And it's like, <laughs> what? I, and so, there. so then I got angry Josh, which I mean, rarely happens. How dare How you? Dare How dare you? you not put David Griffin on the list? But I was like, oh, so that's what I get for working at IGN and I don't get on the list. So I was just embodying David Griffin. <laughs> These people had no idea what David Griffin looked like, apparently. Uh, so I texted David. I said, you're not on the list. He goes, no, no, I'm not on the VIP. I'm in the regular person list. So I didn't get in the party, but uh, David Griffin always on the case, always doing his TV work. And uh, again, would love to have him call in. I don't know what his is ex exclusivity is with IGN or anything well, like that. Well, so. I, I think after that event, now he's he's banned he's, from all IGN yeah, parties because everyone's fired. like, God, David Griffin's such a dick. He's not he's not nice to anyone at the door. It's kind of like when the mom in season three of uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air went upstairs and then season four we had a new Aunt Viv. Oh, yeah. 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 And then the sister in Family Matters disappeared. Yeah. Nobody uh, knows. Chuck, Cunning Chuck Cunningham in uh, Happy Days. Gone. Just disappeared. See ya. <laughs> Into the wind. Uh, but yeah, and again, Sinead will call in. So uh, Emma will call in. I don't. Sasha Pro Raver I haven't talked to in a long time. I know she has a baby now. Congratulations. She's amazing. Fantastic girl. But um, we're, this is that nice show now. We can really do whatever we want. It's an hour long yeah. podcast. We're going to do uh, ancillary content of s separate reviews. We were just talking about doing the first six episodes of Daredevil together. Me, you, John Roca, Dennis Sen, something like that. Um, we're going to do some, like, if there's a big series, say Jack Ryan, and we want to do a full kind of review, we can split that off, shoot a video, and release it on the podcast channel. We have free reign to really do whatever we want with this channel. That being said, if you want to tweet at myself, at Josh McCuga, at Thad Williams, two very easy names to spell and and say, tweet us what you want us to do on this channel. We have free reign. We can do whatever we want. Thad? Uh, yeah, I I, I want to do standalone reviews. I want to talk. I want to talk to some people in the industry. Yes. Uh, some friends of mine are, are are writers and producers for a lot of shows. Yeah. Would love to bring them in, talk about the process, talk about what it takes to have have a television show get on the air, and yeah. how it stays on the air from a weekly basis. We can talk to some actor friends of ours. Absolutely. I, I think uh, there's a, there's the world is our oyster. Yeah. And the TV talk feed is uh, is ours to just have fun with. For sure. And I think the really cool thing is that we do get a lot of requests from PR people and um, 
you know, uh, writers, producers, people that want to come on and talk about their shows that maybe we didn't have the opportunity to do back in the day because Studio A was a little booked up and it was a, a really quick show or it was daily or it was even weekly and we had we only had this one show. But now we can do whatever we want because the podcast feed, the channel feed, everything is ours and we have, again, free reign to do all kinds of fun stuff. There will always be a weekly show. Always. If I'm not here or Thad's not here, somebody will sub in for one of us uh, or we'll pre-record or whatever the case may be. Um, but there will always be a weekly show. Who, in one week, we could do 10 shows. Who knows if there's different things that are going yeah. on or something like that. So just stay tuned to the podcast feed. Uh, we're going to upload all kinds of fun stuff. I love talking TV. And you're always like, well, why is Thad the co-host? I have wanted Thad to be my co-host <laughs> since like day one of Collider TV Talk. Thad knows more about television than I could ever dream to know. He is the Allison Keene uh, of, of the Collider video side. This guy knows more about television. He talks to me about writers and producers, and he meant, he sees editors at the end of episodes. Once an episode of TV is in, I'm done. I go on to the next thing. I, I try and consume television. I've never, seen, I've never seen a human consume television the way that you consume television. You can tell your story. Uh, yeah. You, you put a little window in, your, in the top right of your, your, your laptop, uh -huh. and you're, you're watching a show while you're like typing out other things, yeah. your, your scripts, you, emails, whatever you you multitask so well. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how I can't I can't I, I can't do that. I have to plug in yeah. and turn everything else off. There are a few shows where you have to really pay attention, right? Uh, where if you miss something because something's going on, or if there's subtitles, like my favorite show, Gamora <laughs> on uh, Sundance Channel, or I have I think it's Sundance about the Italian mob in, in Naples. You have to actually pay attention. But I can multitask with certain shows that people tell me to watch. And yeah. I'm like, ah, I'll throw it up there because a lot of it is fluff. That's how I've been able to consume television. Uh, I mean, basically all of season one of Luke Cage was in the top <laughs> corner of my laptop. Uh, so I, yeah. But Thad, in Thad, like you absorb television. You go to those Paley fests. You know yeah. a ton of TV. I, I I love TV. I've I've always loved TV. I didn't go to the movies a lot as a kid. Okay. Uh, my my parents would not bring us to the to the theater that often, and so television was kind of my window. Mm. And I ever since I was little, I've always been drawn to the to the medium of television okay. to the 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 concept of the sitcom and the and then the drama and the 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 limited series and movies oh, that, yeah. that were so big, the movie, the week, uh, Ooh, I that remember. was, those, those were the movies that I saw. Remember you'd watch it on Sunday and Monday and then sometimes they'd have a wrap up on Wednesday. Yeah. The yeah. six hour TV it, yeah, movie. It would take CBS. like three or four nights. I know. Yeah. The thorn birds, all that. I remember. Do you remember, uh, the first TV show that really kind of grabbed you? Ooh. Uh, I mean it, it's evolved. I think the first, like the first adult program that mm -hmm. I watched that I really, really got into was probably Mash. Okay, I was a big, I was a big fan of uh, interesting, big fan of Mash. Okay, before that, uh, when I was very little, I, I got into Batman, oh, the, yeah. the the '60s show, and I watched a lot of that and shit I, too. I, I I I love the Bright Knight, and uh, I I really that was started my love of Batman, started my love of. Uh, of comics and okay. all those things cool. and then and then Star Trek and yeah. 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 Oh and and I should say that. I mean I think that's been said on here many a time, but that is also a Star Trek junkie. He's seen every basically every episode of a Star Trek TV oh, yeah. show at least once. Yeah. Next Generation, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh were you a fan of the Star Trek Discovery on CBS All I Access? Did, I I liked it. Good. I I think it's it wasn't perfect, but yeah. no first season of any of the Star Trek spin-offs from Next Gen onward have ever been perfect. And so I'm hoping, I'm very hopeful for season two, because I think that there's a lot of fun stuff that's going to happen. Sure. And uh, I didn't get to go to the Star Trek convention this past year, but Perry and Dennis went, and they talked to a lot of the cast and some of the creators, and, and it sounds like there's some really cool stuff cool. going on. So. And again, the, some of those cast members could stop by the office. Uh, it's I will say this, it's a lot easier to get TV personalities in the studio than it is movie personalities because yes. it seems like they're always either out of town or traveling whereas a lot of TV is shot here in Los Angeles so we can get and you know with a lot of the sitcoms going back to three cam you know in studio kind of a situation to get away from single cam some of these I'm sure we can get some or if not a lot of those people to stop by yeah so uh, let's get into some news uh, so Mr. Robot season four Mr. Robot will end at season four so what they're saying, uh, I think they've been saying this kind of for the whole time. Uh, they were thinking about maybe going to five. Yeah. But I think because Mr. Robot started so high, 
it was like a rookie quarterback whose first game he threw seven touchdowns, right? Yeah. It was like, oh my God, it's going to be the greatest quarterback ever. Season two was a real disappointment. I haven't even watched season three. Me either. But I like that Sam Ismail has said, okay, I see the light at the end of the tunnel on this one. Yeah. Maybe people, because it's a confusing show. <laughs> it's a confusing <laughs> I have no idea where I am half the time. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, and there and there, and there was so much time, uh, like time and space jumping in season two. I've heard that season three is really good, okay. and I, I, I I'm pretty sure that uh, Allison and the Collider dot com t- team wrote wrote a few reviews of it and really liked it. I, okay. saw, I saw a lot of publicity about like come back to Mr. Robot. It's it's gotten better again. Okay. They they got back to basics. I, I haven't sat down to do the binge. Right. Uh, I, now that I know that season four is going to be the finale, I think I'm, I'm going to make a point to go back to it. I think that's the glorious thing is that there is yeah. going to be an end. Yes. So we're watching season four knowing that the story will end. Yeah. It's unlike, not going to be 12 seasons on Showtime. Unlike uh, a show that I currently watch in AMC, which I feel like at this point, I have yet to talk to somebody in within our circle of friends, within a group of friends, people that I know watch the show. That still watch the show. I feel like I'm on an island. I am. I am Tom Hanks in Castaway. Wilson is is my Rick, and Michonne is a palm tree. Norman Reedus is 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 a, a, a ice skate that he knocked his teeth out with. Like I am on this island alone. I have nothing. I'm the only person watching Walking Dead. And Man. I hate, hate to break it to you, but Wilson's about to drift away because <laughs> uh, he's done. He's done. And I don't. I don't even know how the show goes on at this point. I they 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 they're on. He their, got a haircut. I saw in the trailer. They're on their twelfth showrunner. I mean, they're they're just. Good lord! Like, the only cool thing is, is that uh, they're bringing Ryan Hurst on as a yes. as a villain, who's Opie and Sons of Anarchy. He uh, Gary Bertier in Remember the Titans. Also, uh, uh, what was his name on Outsiders? I, I hosted the after show for uh, WG in America, which is an amazing show. If you you can find Outsiders, I think streaming on Hulu. It's an amazing television show. It's really really well done and underrated. I, I could go back and watch that show anytime. I might be a little partial because it's shot in Pittsburgh, but. Uh, he played Lil Foster Farrell. Little Foster, that's right, because there was Big Foster, Lil Foster, yeah. uh, and he was awesome. And I've met him before. Ryan Hurst, an amazing dude, and he has He's that villainous actor. look. Great actor. Yeah, uh, he has that villainous look with that beard, and uh, and he's a great actor. I- I'm looking forward to seeing what he does because I'm exhausted by Negan. Exhausted by him. I don't know how we got on this Walking Dead conversation. I'm sorry. Uh, we were talking, <laughs> we were Mr. talking Robot. about Mr. Robot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go watch season three. I think I'm going to do the same thing. I got the USA app. I've been watching the season of Sinner with Bill Pullman, which we can. Well, we're going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, so I'm going to watch season three because I can still remember how season two ended. Yeah. Because I was so invested in the damn season. Right. Right. That it won't take long. Maybe I'll just watch like one of those three minute recaps of season two, and I'll get. To yeah, you'll be fine. I'll, I'll 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 put suits on hold for oh. the USA app, and oh, then move man. and then move back to uh, move. Ba- hey, don't Deb Makuga is going to be pissed that you're putting suits on hold. That's her show. I I still have not watched the final few episodes with Meg with uh, with with Princess Lady, Margaret. Princess Princess Margaret. Uh, Princess uh, Markle. Markle. Markle, Meghan Markle, Meghan Markle, Meghan Markle. So is it Princess Meghan? Does it's, she get to change her name? Or is she Dutch? She's a Duchess. Duchess. She, she didn't get princess status. Got she's it. She's American. Okay. But okay. I I, I, I don't know the royalty. Do you can we change call your Janina name? and she yeah. can explain this shit to us? Somebody I, call Janina. Okay, we got it. Um. But uh, I again, my mom, huge Suits fan. So we're both going to watch season three yeah. of Mr. Robot. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to watch season four because we know it has an end. Yes. And then we can discuss. Uh, I saw a trailer last night before Crazy Rich Asians for the Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Oh, yeah. I just don't know why they put those teeth on Rami Malek. I get it. That's his I look. Get, I get it. But you could have done it without the teeth. You don't need the teeth. Yeah. I the, I think the teeth will. The, he does the hair and the mustache already. The, the, the teeth are a little hard to get past. But I, th- I I think his performance is going to shine through. I'm hoping. Okay. Yeah, me too. In, in the trailers I that Queen. I've seen, I, I I've been hearing good buzz about the movie. I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah. Uh, and I think he and Sam Esmail are doing a film together as well. Interesting. Uh, that something uh, like a political thriller kind of okay. thing that uh, that he wrote. So I they're going to be Malik being they're going to be working. Kind of they're going to be working together for a while. Yeah. I think. yeah. So. All right, so season four, we're going to get on Mr. Robot. If you guys have, are out there and you've watched season three and really loved it, um, let us know. Because I honestly, I haven't heard too many people tweet me or say anything about Mr. Robot. I'm, no. I haven't it, heard anything. It, it was a flash, big Real flash, and then, and then kind of drew yeah. off in season two. All right, the Connors, let's move on. The Connors, uh, which is now the new title of the show, Roseanne. Uh, they're going to kill off Roseanne. I think we kind of had, had known this. Um, 
I've said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, I was never a Roseanne fan. We weren't allowed to watch it in my house. Um, my parents did not appreciate Roseanne Barr, her comedy, anything about her persona, anything that she did. Uh, I'm not shocked that what she said was racist. I, I, if there's anybody out there in entertainment that's like, hey, you know, Roseanne's a racist. I'm like, oh, what? I did, I, you're sh- I'm shocked. Color me shocked. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think? Are you were were you ever Rose? No, we were. Uh, we it's kind of the same boat. I okay. we didn't watch it growing up. Uh, I actually I like her stand up. Mm-hmm. Like her old stand up is she's a very very talented comedian. I mm-hmm. thought, but uh, I never really gravitated to the show. Uh, I didn't didn't watch it as as a kid. I didn't tune in for this new iteration of the show. Sure. Uh, I I think that her firing was a little odd and obviously opened up a can of worms with Disney and then they had to get rid of James Gunn and all that stuff. Uh, but I'm not surprised that they kill, they're they killing her off. They killed Dan off once right. and they brought him back. Yeah. So I think that uh, it makes a lot of sense to do the Connors without yeah. uh, without Roseanne. Well, they, they had to pay. They had to pay them anyways. They they had they had signed a deal. They had all signed options for season two. The the lead four characters, the remaining four, right. were I think going to get two hundred and fifty an episode. Jesus. And there was a thirteen ten or thirteen episode commitment. So a- ABC was on the hook for a lot of money. Damn. And so it was like it it, it was that or they were just gonna do like the John Goodman fun time radio hour. Right. Which I think would have been a better option. <laughs> that uh, if you pitch me John Goodman anything, yeah. I'm buying it. Especially fun time radio hour. I I, I think that would that would have been the winner. But what I think was they the decided late night to go... show that did the Dan sketch. Do you remember? It was like Dan did they just call it Dan? Oh, uh, was that was, was it Kimmel? Kimmel? I think it was Kimmel. Kimmel. Yeah. I think it was Kimmel. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, I again, I I watched Roseanne w- twice or two or three times when I found out they were carving really cool pumpkins during the Halloween episode, and they were really <laughs> cool pumpkins. But that's all I got uh, on the Roseanne. I listen. I think that everybody in this life deserves a second chance sometimes, and I don't know if Roseanne's racist comments. Um, necessarily should ruin her entire life. It's not like she Bill yeah. Cosby at anything or, you know, that she was she's a Harvey Weinstein or anything like that. Yes, she did say something extremely offensive. I'm not putting any light on it. And I think Disney made the right decision in in getting rid of her and firing her. I, I don't think that there's any place for that in anything. But I think that we're losing some sight of due process sometimes of a certain extent. Yeah. Uh, but again, this is TV. This is Disney. They own it. If you say something offensive, you're getting canned. And I think if you get say something offensive at your office, you're getting canned. So, and it's not like this was the a uh, one time offense, right? This was this That's was what a I'm long saying. this was a long time coming. We had given her, her chances. Her, her 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 public persona had been very um, very vitriolic for a very long time. One hundred percent. And so I think this was just the last straw. I, I think at the end of the day, if you want to talk business, this show was pushed into production by Sarah Gilbert. Okay. And she was the one that kind of was behind the scenes making the Roseanne reboot happen. Right. So I think it made a lot of sense to kind of get the show up and running and then kind of push Roseanne to the side because sure. she was the bad apple in the group. And Always then, was. and she never actually created the show. Yeah. So she has she has no credit in the new the new series. The you the character the character of Roseanne was based on her stand up, but the actual characters of the show and the the setting of Roseanne was credited to the producer at the time. Interesting. And so he is going to be the sole creator of the Connors at Got this it. point. And Sarah Gilbert and John Goodman and Laurie Metcalf, who I bumped into at my my doggy daycare nice. a couple weeks ago. What kind of dog uh, you have? I'm not sure. It was a okay. tall, it was a like greyhound looking uh, kind of okay. thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, I assume she was dropping them off uh, right. to to then go to the set to work on the show. Right. And I think they're all fantastic actors. One hundred percent. The show will probably still find an audience. Yeah. It might not last more than the episodes that ABC has already been on the hook for uh, financially, but at the very least, it won't be a total waste. And here's the thing: if the Connors succeeds and is better than the Roseanne, fantastic. Yeah. And we saw that we can go without Roseanne and things because. Yeah. Again, there's no place for what she said. There's no place. There really is no place for being a racist asshole anywhere. Right. Especially on TV and especially in the public eye. That being said, there are a lot of people out there who are and somehow are succeeding yes. in certain things. Uh, that doesn't mean you should be like that. No. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> two, mean. Two wrongs don't right, make a right. Correct. But you know what? You know what? Uh, completely off topic. You know Good. what reboot I am looking forward to on network TV this Talk fall? Talk to me. Murphy Brown. 
I loved that show as a kid. I watched every episode of Murphy Brown. I, I loved that show as a kid. My mom's favorite show. And uh, I, it's so interesting because it didn't really align with my parents' politics at all. Very left But uh, one of the the guy that played the producer, the the tight knit producer, um, tightly Sheldon. wound producer. No, no, no. That's that's, that's big. <laughs> that's big. That's, that's, a, that's a whole other topic. But uh, he he went to my dad's alma mater, uh-huh. and so my dad was like, "Oh, that's, that's the guy from University of Richmond. He's on television. Yes. So we're going to watch that show." Yes. And we watched it all the time. And I'm so excited for the reboot. I think it's the perfect time for it. I agree. Uh, I, we. I, I'm going to IMDb. I what interviewed that uh, is. Lyle. I, is it Lyle? Lowell. It. Uh, Lowell was on Wings. Lowell was, that was Wings. That was Thomas Jesus. Hayden Church. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I uh, I interviewed one of the first jobs I had out here. We did a lot of interviews for the TV Academy. Okay. And we, we interviewed Diane English, who was the creator of Murphy Brown. Yeah. And the whole story about how that show got made and having a female showrunner and a female lead in the late 80s was kind of uncommon at the Miles. time. Miles! Miles! There it yes. is. He's back. Dude, 203 episodes. It was it was a powerhouse. It was on for like nine <sighs> seasons or something. And Eldon the Painter. Remember when yeah. Eldon left? And he, di- he died in real life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Oh, man, I loved Eldon. Yeah. He was great in the in the movie Striking Distance. I was in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Um, two hundred. Always f- turning around to Pittsburgh. Yeah. We, should, we should have a tally. That's the first. That's the first or second Pittsburgh reference if, so far. If you're listening at home, just start uh, reference. I'm wearing a T-shirt, so there's one reference already. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my parents loved Murphy Brown, and we would watch it all the time. It was one of those shows that my mom would tape. Ooh, Remember, tape yeah. on the VCR. If oh, we weren't yeah. at home, she would tape Murphy Brown. We could never get the VCR programming to work. My mom was a VCR savant. She would tape. All three hours of her soaps during the day. Yeah. Watch them and then tape like a Murphy Brown or something at night. We went through, because VHS is after a while, you, they just burn through the tape, right? Yeah. So if you recorded, you know, six to seven weeks straight of, go, of Bold and Beautiful and, and Young and the Restless, it was going to burn out. Yeah. So my mom had a Costco bin of blank tapes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think one time she almost exa- accidentally taped over her Sleepless in Seattle. And, and almost lost it. Yeah, yeah. Because that's that's my her favorite. my mother in law taped over one of the family home video tapes mm. with like jazzer size <laughs> for like twenty minutes, and I was digitizing them a couple Christmases ago, and and sure enough, like in the middle of everyone opening presents, it just cuts to like Elaine dancing jazzer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do this and this and this, and she's mortified by it. So oh, sorry, Sally. Amazing. I didn't mean to bring that up. Speaking if of you're Elaine, listening. Elaine wrote a uh, a spec for Murphy Brown, and Kramer appeared on the show. If you remember. Oh wow. Good. Yeah. Good, good reference. Seinfeld poll. Uh, okay, I, a lot of people have been asking about this, and uh, I think it's pretty much on the collective conscious tongue of TV watchers is Sharp Objects on yeah. HBO. We both watched. Yes. I got into it late. I, I got into it, and I got to give credit to my friend Nassim and my friend Rob Lindo. Uh, they were watching it from day one and loved it, and they pushed it on me real hard. So when episode four came out, that was that weekend, I went back and watched. So I didn't start watching it until episode four. Gotcha. I love Amy Adams. Yes. Love her in anything she does. She, she's phenomenal every single time. I met her. I actually, I don't think I've ever said this on air before. I posed nude in an art class in New York, <laughs> and she was in the art class. I so Amy knew Adams half of that story, but I didn't know the nude. second half of that yeah, story. Amy Adams was in the class. Wow, that was an enchanted evening. It was, and I was an extra in Enchanted. Oh, yes, you were. Yeah. Yes, you were. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, See, I thought that's what the story was going to be. No. Like, not, I, not I've not i shown myself to Amy Adams. To Amy Adams. Uh, I got to tell you, when I first showed up, it was this art school in New York, okay? And I was working out at a gym, and this was about 30 pounds ago. I was pretty, I was pretty cut. <laughs> Right. It was right after college. Yeah. So I was working out a ton in college and, you know, whatever. It was before I hit my 30s. My metabolism went into the floor. And uh, a woman saw me at the gym and she's like, hey, I run an art school in New York. We're always looking for men to pose, especially men that are natural looking, that have chest hair. And I was like, well, I got that for you. No problem. Check. Yeah. So she this hired before me before or after Plasterhead. This was during Plasterhead time. This is the Plasterhead era, Thad. Okay, all right. If all you're right. out there wondering what Plasterhead is, go ahead and uh, IMDb Plasterhead. I played Steve. Uh, you can pick it up. I believe You can still buy copies of it, I believe, but I also believe it's on streaming services somewhere. Y- your death scene is incredible. It is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, so you pose, so, 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 pose, you, so you go to the, go to the, go art, to the art class, class, and I walk in, and there's Amy Adams. And she wasn't that well-known at that point. She had just done Rosebug. Uh, oh, uh, Junebug. Junebug. I, that's when I fell in love with her. Ugh. That's when I fell in love with her. I love that film. On the DVD of Junebug, there are extras of her auditioning. It's incredible. Oh, it's like the Rachel it. McAdams auditions for Notebook. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I knew who she was, and then she was doing Enchanted, but I knew who she was not an actress because I'd seen her in things before. I read an article about her. I was at a big crush on Amy Adams. 
and I walk into class and there she is. And I, I don't, I, I almost left. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't want to do it. So the teacher was like, all right, this is our, our, uh, our model for the next couple of weeks, Josh. And this is the pose Josh will be doing. And I did like, it wasn't a thinker, the classic, it was a sculpture class. So it was, so they drew me and so then you they sculpted all, you me. You were just all out. Yeah. It was like an atlas. Oh right? gosh. And so I'm doing Enchanted. Uh, I'm, I'm an extra on Enchanted. And I'm at the front. It's this big crowd scene. If you guys ever watched the movie Enchanted with Amy Adams, there's a scene where a little person comes out from under her dress in New York City. And she's wearing this huge white dress. And if you look behind her, there's Josh Makuga. Young, I think you made it in the sheet. trailer, too. I did make it in the yeah. trailer. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm, they have her body double doing you know, a couple of takes. And then they bring in Amy Adams. She walks up and she just looks right in my eyes and goes, oh, my God. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Love it. Yep. Love it. So uh, TV Talk fans out there, if you were also in this art <laughs> class and want to send us your, your drawing of Josh a nude as Atlas, uh, hashtag Collider TV Talk. Huey Nudes and the McCooks. Oh. Um, so Sharp Objects. Yeah. Uh, what were we talking about again? Sharp Sorry. Objects. So I again, this, this show, my wife fell for it. I'm sure your wife watched it with you. Yeah, we watched it together. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was a very slow burn. That's an understatement. Yeah. The 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 constant cutaways to different things, these flash cuts yeah. were very jarring to me. Yeah. The ending I thought the last hour and a half, I do not think paid for my five and a half hours of time before. Yeah. That's, Patricia that's, Clarkson that's my thought too. Will get nominated. Oh. Amy Adams will get nominated. Oh, she'll win for, for a limited series actress, I think, right. at this point. Like she was Phenomenal, and and Patricia Clarkson, I think, will win for supporting, but probably. I mean, depending on what happens. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Um, I just, I mean, give me your opinion. I, I, we watched the first couple episodes on a weekly basis, and it was just, for lack of a great pun, it was yeah. dull, and it wasn't, it wasn't working for me. And then I kept reading like, oh, the twist in episode five is going to blow your mind. Right. So we binged, I think, four, five, and six in a, in a, in a group and i was like well episode five is over i didn't really get a what what was the twist that she, was it the she hooked end? up she hooked up with the guy like right. that's not a twist we saw that from the very beginning we knew it was gonna so happen so then i thought it was, maybe it was in episode six you and then, put a, a sultry christmas scene the lead's gonna hook up with him he's he's a handsome man yeah and it, yeah and uh and then we get to see christmas Cena's butt which fantastic all for it it's all um, you jackman down yeah yeah and uh and then episode six comes along don't know maybe the twist is happening now didn't didn't really mm -hmm. feel it and it was just it kept going and going it was very plotting i i started to kind of i get an idea about where things were going sure. the dollhouse was kind of thrown spoiler alert uh spoiler alert graphic right here yeah, uh if you haven't watched the show um i i expected the dollhouse to kind of play a big part it had to because it was and, in every episode uh, i mean my wife called patricia clarkson uh in like the the first 10 minutes she was like well she's the bad person and i was like well yeah obviously Clearly. and then and then amma and all that stuff and we started like literally in the, we turned to each other in the middle of uh like right as patricia clarkson's getting handcuffed mm -hmm. and they start the montage and we turn we're like so the twist is gonna be the kid it's gonna be the daughter, the daughter. right and sure enough that's what it was right. i didn't read the book uh, again spoiler alert but yeah but like i i, I, I didn't read the book I either read shocker the, yeah i know that's hard to believe yeah. same here same same to me i think we're yeah. we have about the same uh same reading habits yeah but uh but i i knew it was gillian gillian flynn gillian flynn gillian gillian Starts with G. I, G. Yeah. I'm always confused. G Flynn. Uh, uh, G, G, G Flynn. Part of the G unit. G Flynn and special sauce. Yes. Uh, she <laughs> she wrote uh, she wrote Gone Girl. Yeah. So I was expecting a big twist. Yeah. And and you know very violent and bloody and all this shit. Right. And uh, yeah, I just didn't feel like the ending justified the burn. And I what what makes no sense over anything else is why Jean-Marc Vallée has to have eight editors on every episode. What is that? I don't know. He works in a team. Could you which, imagine being an editor? No. I mean, that's something that's kind of reserved <clears throat> for for a reality program, like docu-series programming. Because there's a billion hours of footage. Yeah. I don't really understand why, like how, I really want to read an article about why what his process is in the editing room. He is one of the editors. He works under a pseudonym. Yeah. And he edits. he's edited a lot of his films in the past as well. And he's like a Louis C.K. kind of situation where he edited all his Well, hopefully stuff. he's not a Louis C.K. Yeah. situation. But right. yes. Um, yeah, he's he, he uh, more like Steven Soderbergh. Like oh, Soderbergh, got it, got Soderbergh got it, got it. Yeah, directs, yeah. And, uh, directs and shoots and edits all of his projects. Mm -hmm. And But he, he works in this big team. And I, I, I don't know if one person is solely working on the montages that ended every episode. Whoa. If one person is solely working on 
taking all of the scenes and making them more confusing. Well, because uh, again, just, it's just, a very, you had to pay really close attention yeah. to that show. Because if you miss one flashback, you could have uh, missed a whole episode. And I kept missing, I kept missing all the letter, the words that would change yes. as she was driving, like, like signage would change, like graffiti would change, would change words. I, and Amanda would be like, did you see Easter that? Egg. Like it switched to like, say the word freak. And I'm like, no, I didn't I'm catch that. So I'm so bad I'm at focused, Easter eggs. I'm focusing on Amy Adams. I'm not focusing on the background. Yep. And so it's like, it's, it's going all over the place. And even that, it just, it didn't didn't it didn't capture what it didn't catch me like I thought it would. The fact that we got and I've read a couple articles about a season two, uh, which I am totally against. Yeah, I um, hope they, 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 they before it premiered they said they weren't doing no. it and they really shouldn't. And I, again, I'm I'm very skeptical of a second season of of uh, Big Little Lies. But hey, Meryl Streep. But Meryl Streep, listen, Streep can do no wrong. That's true. Okay, Twenty One Jump Streep. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, that would if that's what if I was Meryl Streep, that would be the name of my podcast. <laughs> Twenty One Jump Streep. I don't think Meryl Streep is going to ha- ever have a podcast, but if she did, that I would, would listen to it. I w- yeah, it Streep great. Trader Joe's has a podcast now. They've been advertising on NPR the Trader Cast. Uh, no, it's it's called like Inside Trader Joe's, <laughs> uh, which is, is the let's Trader interview Ca- Josh. Josh, what are you getting today? Uh, I usually just get the same thing. This like peanut butter granola and six breakfast burritos. Oh, cool! All right, great, <laughs> good, good story. Um, so. <laughs> So they said that there, there, there's no plan for a season two, which I'm totally fine with. I, I, I will say, as an audience member, I feel almost insulted that we got our wrap up in 12 seconds of a post credit. Yes. yes. Imagine watching all of Infinity War. You watch all of Avengers: Infinity War. Okay. Nothing happens. Yeah. They think. Oh, they, they. Oh, we don't know. Did Thanos? Did Thanos do it? Okay, cool. And then the post credits is him snapping his fingers. Yeah, that would. That that that's kind of what happened. Spo- <laughs> Spoiler alert: If you're the two people on the planet that haven't watched uh, Avengers: Infinity the War, the one point nine billion. But, uh, yeah, it it that. And that montage was the most effective montage of the entire series. And it was in the post credits. And it was in the post credits. And I don't and I read an I read an interview with Marty Noxon, the the showrunner, uh, about why they decided to do that. In the book, it it's much more it's a much more definitive ending in yeah, the book. Yeah. Where well, you'd hope because you read yeah, it. Yeah. Where she like she turns her in she turns in her, her her sister and then has to deal with the ramifications of doing that. With she her gets mom. Ba- she gets back to cutting and she ends up living with uh, with with the editor and his wife, got it, uh, and they kind of bring Who her I, in. Who's I love that dynamic. I yeah. thought that was great. Oh yeah, that yeah. was that was that was great. And I, but then like they they focused on the morning rituals of the the police chief. Who cares? I don't I don't understand. He smokes it. cigarettes. He's got a mustache. Yeah, he gets his hair. Matt cut. Craven. I I really like great that actor. actor. I, I I was happy to see him in the show, yeah. but uh, I I just didn't really understand a lot no. of it. I don't know. It would, Again, yeah. it was it was. Um, it's it's a hard show to compare to because there are some very slow burning shows out there. Yeah, um, and I feel like I've watched a lot of them. Uh, Rectify being a very slow burn, but That's, Rectify. Yeah, yeah. Every episode, something in Rectify happened. It was, and this is I'm doing another sports reference, but it's like when you hit a perfect golf shot and you've played terrible all day, it keeps you coming back for that next round of golf, right? Same as rect- Rectify, it was like, okay, slow burns. Oh, that's amazing. Slow burns. Oh, that's it. Sherber Objects didn't have that for me. Yeah. Didn't have it. No. Um, if it wasn't for Amy Adams, I don't think I would have kept after th- episode three. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think you're absolutely right. She she was the hook. She mm-hmm. got me. Uh, Patricia Clarkson was great. Oh, the so girl that, the girl that plays the daughter was, was really good. I look forward to seeing more stuff uh, mm-hmm. with her in the future. I, I know she's getting a lot of work right now. Uh, the the dad they never explained what happened with the like the father the stepfather they hinted at a lot of stuff like my biggest plot hole in that whole thing was so the dad doesn't get in yeah, trouble he doesn't get arrested it's like, a ses- accessory or the the maid the, the maid didn't the get arrested maid, nothing happened with the maid I, lots of lots of lots of questions Some holes. lots of questions maybe they'll maybe they'll wrap it all up in in the a season TV, two sharp, that no one wants sharp objects the TV movie yeah uh, speaking of rectify yeah. One of the stars of Rectify was Clean Crawford, who then went to Lethal Weapon yes. and got his ass fired uh-huh. for doing some bad stuff on set. And now he's talking I, out about it. Well, okay, so he's saying that, excuse our language here, that the set blowups on Lethal Weapon he, is a blatant fucking lie, okay? I, you're going to say that. Yeah. If you are the person being accused of this situation to salvage your career, you're bad. Problem is, and we said it before we were recording. If nine people witness a murder and they witness you doing the murder, yeah. you're guilty. If nine people on set say that you were a bad dude and terrible to work with, you are a bad dude and tough to work with. Yeah, right? it's, and I, I think that if you're trying to 
trying to squash the rumor that you have an explosive personality, mm -hmm. uh, blatant fucking lies, and maybe the wrong choice of words <laughs> yes, to yes. say like, yeah, like you could have just said like, it's flat out wrong. It, in between having a, a lawyer, like a professional law brief as your yeah. written statement and blatant fucking lie, let's meet somewhere in the middle yeah. of like, you know, being true, being yourself, being organic, Sa instead of saying, yo, bro, I Didn't still play fucking live, bro. Uh, yeah, come at me. Um, yeah, I was I was so excited. I, 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 Did you watch I, Lethal? Man? I watched the pilot, and okay. it was actually a really, really. I agree. It was a really good adaptation. I watched, I watched three episodes. It was a really good adaptation of Lethal Weapon, yeah. like as opposed to the MacGyver reboot, which Yikes. which made me cry as and, a huge fan of MacGyver. And it's uh, coming back. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's in like season three or whatever. But uh, I was so excited that one of the Rectify cast was getting this big mm -hmm. gig because yeah. I was I loved Rectify. We watched every episode, and I, I I was like, oh, he's finally making it. He's gonna do that big action show. He's yeah. gonna blow up and then he blew up but it, he was blowing in the up wrong way like it was yeah. it was like you read those articles and there was a lot of he said he said with him and damon wayans right. but uh it was if you it, work in it's hollywood not good. it's if not you good work in you hollywood, just be nice be nice one and never ever mess with the people that have nothing to lose like the gaffers the pas those kind of people yeah. if they're interviewed and asked about something they'll say don't put my name in it i'll tell you straight up yeah because they their lives are their lives are really tough in general. Yeah. Because yeah. being a PA is really tough. All that kind of They're stuff. They're working for a living. They're working. Yeah. If you mess with, if you make their lives even more miserable, they can't wait. To, it's like being a waiter or a waitress. Yep. As soon as somebody asks me, or a bartender, as soon as somebody asks me about a celebrity, if I've waited on them, I'll tell them straight up how terrible a human or how amazing they are. Right. Right. You should always treat people with kindness and Correct. and 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 not just and not just the gaffers as, as someone that knows a lot of people in the, in the makeup and hair oh, and wardrobe yeah. departments. Yep. They're the people that see the actors at their absolute worst because they see them at like two in the morning when mm -hmm. they have to show up to get their makeup done and everything, and. The stories that they will tell you, it's like if 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 you're not nice to the people, if you're an actor and you're not nice to the people that are showing up at the ass crack of dawn to make Before you look pretty, you. to make you look pretty mm -hmm. every day yeah. and then making sure throughout the day that you continue to look pretty, yeah. like then you're just you're just not a good person. You're not a good person. You're not a good person. And and it, I hear way too, so many so many stories that have just destroyed all of my my hopes and dreams about yes. so many people in Hollywood. Yeah. Where I talk to a friend who's a wardrobe person or uh, or, or or a makeup, makeup artist, artist, and they're just like, oh, they no. got the stories. Oh, I I can tell you some yes. stuff. Yeah. And it's it's never good. Never it's good. Never good. Um, Sorry, Clay. <laughs> I really want I I wanted you to succeed. Clean. I really did. I really did. I know another story that I I can't say any names, but that Clay Crawford. Even Offset is not a very good tip. Um, and real quick, talking about Rectify Cast, the mom, Amantha's mom. Yes. Um, did they actress, ever figure out why her name was Amantha? Uh, I don't know, but I kind of like Amantha. It was like, did they just leave, very the, southern. Did they leave the S off the, <laughs> off the birth certificate? It's almost like Barcelona, right? <laughs> Amantha. Like, they, like it just rubbed off the thumb, <laughs> like someone's holding it and just the S disappeared. Is this a D or a TH? Uh, I think it's a TH. There it is, Amantha. Right. Amantha. Um, she, the mom is in Succession, which is a criminally underrated I haven't show. I started that yet. And awesome. I, I started DVR, DVRing it, and then we moved, and I didn't have cable for a little while, and uh, the DVR got wiped. So I'm going to binge the whole series. <sighs> uh, I love Adam McKay. I, I love that he's doing more and financial world dark stuff. Stick around for the post uh, interviews with cast and because they interview uh, Adam McKay after every episode. Oh, and awesome. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah he's, uh, he's the smartest guy in the world. Succession and, is Bonkers good. And here's the thing. Unlike comedies, in a comedy, I want the pilot to get me. I want I want com like Detroiters. Might be yeah. one of the best pilots in the last couple years. Probably, in my opinion, the funniest comedy of the last couple years, as far as in that genre. Sure. Nothing could really touch touch Veep, uh, but and Sam Richards is in both shows. <laughs> um and I'm not just saying this because Sam Richardson is a friend of mine. I laugh he's, out loud. He's a great dude. He's an amazing and he's guy. He's really funny. Hysterical. And Detroiters is is I mean, because it's on Comedy Central, maybe a lot of people don't see it as much as they would have used as they used to. But if it was on a Netflix or a Hulu, it'd be on yeah. fire. Yeah. This show is, and and that pilot is so so good. If a comedy pilot doesn't get me, I'm probably going to be meh on the rest of the series. Dramas, I have to give an episode or two because the the drama pilot is an exposition usually. Yes. Second one, you get into the the main plot. Third one, now you're in the nitty gritty. I'm telling you, Succession by episode five, you are hooked it is so well done and the mom plays in um, from rectify i don't know her name uh she plays a general counsel within the company and she is 
she is night and day from her character in Rectify. Ooh. It's so good. So good. All right. Well, yeah, that's gonna that's going on my list yeah. for sure. Succession. Uh, speaking of HBO, uh, Succession was on HBO. Uh, HBO is winding down its late night adult programming for lack of strong demand. Um, Cue the slide whistle. Here's the thing. I've had HBO for the last eight years, nine years, oh, right? Yeah. I never see that much late night nudity. Cinemax, of course. Yeah. Lord of the G Strings, <laughs> all that is always on, right? Which one has gigolos? Is that Showtime? Um, that is Showtime. Because that's yes. just hilarious. It is pretty funny. A, a, a friend of mine who's a father to a young daughter uh, is loves gigolos <laughs> he and he loves he loves to quote it he loves to 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 send me random gifts from Jig. I, I, I don't know why nothing like it's very funny nothing really adds to the conversation like quoting a show that nobody watches <laughs> gigolos um but i i i don't i feel like hbo's programming in general has an f ton of nudity yeah i mean the deuce game of thrones yeah i mean the first season of game of thrones of oh, at least 15 to 20 minutes of the whole first season, if you put all the episodes together, is a porn. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of banging. Yeah, there was that Funny or Die sketch where it was like, I'm not doing porn, I'm doing HBO. <laughs> yeah, right. And yeah, it's 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 really... So all the late night programming, the adult programming... Goes I'm, away. I'm, I, again, dude, I've never seen that. I mean, if I'm, wa- if I'm scrolling through Cinemax, I always like to play a joke on Amanda, my wife, not Amantha, the character. Yeah, and not Amanda, my wife. Correct. That and I both have wives named Amanda. Uh, I always play the joke on her. She's cause she'll fall asleep with her phone in her hand, and I'll, I'll be scrolling through, and I'll see like uh, co-ed volleyball, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I'll stop. Bikini on car it. wash yeah. twelve. Correct. Yeah. There's a lot of bikini car washes. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite one was a shining spoof that was like. It was oh, all no. girl, all naked girls in like a shining spoof. They were just stuck. Did they do the blood scene in the <laughs> elevator? <laughs> no, like, no, no. They just... were just stuck in a cabin, like way out, or a, a hotel out in the woods, and like creepy things was happening. But that, in between the creepy stuff, sex. Okay, yeah. I mean, sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Done and done. Yeah. Uh, so I'll turn that on, and I'll just I'll turn up the volume just a little bit, and she'll wake up and be like, "Come on!" Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I. But I stopped being able to play that joke because I used to do I used to do a very similar joke yeah. with her. Uh, like I'd be like, "Oh, what's on TV?" and then click it on there. She's yeah. like, "We're not watching this." <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you can't do it anymore because I, I never find anything on on there anymore. Right. Uh, but I, I made I actually tweeted about this. I, I made a list: uh, Westworld, The Deuce, yeah. Game of Thrones, Insecure, True Detective, yeah. Watchmen. I'm assuming is going to have Doctor Manhattan's penis yes. all over the place. Yeah. Uh, like there's that's a, every show on HBO. The Deuce is a show about porn that shows a lot of porn. Yeah. Even John Oliver has some nudity <laughs> once in a while. Like it's they they might be getting away from the explicit stuff because hey, porn is everywhere. If Bill Maher could have all of his guests naked, he would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard some stories. Except That's probably Chris true. Christie. That's probably anyway, true. Uh, but so if you're out there and you're looking for that soft core on HBO late at night, it's, uh, not for it's, you. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen anymore. Sorry about that, guys. All right, let's uh, let's touch on a few things real quick, and then we're going to go with some pick of the weeks and some Twitter questions. Let's do. First trailer for season three, True Detective. Yes. Your thoughts? Uh, it's back to basics. Mm-hmm. It's everything that we that we, everything that we liked about the original show. The time jumps, the uh, the really strong actor as mm-hmm. the lead, mm-hmm. the the southern setting, Nick Piz- Pizzolatto really diving in because he he spent so many years crafting the first season in his in his uh, he was kind of writing it on spec and. You could tell it was like a, it, uh, it was the David, right? Yeah. He was sculpting it yeah. for years, it, and then season two was just rushed into production. It was like, yeah. oh, what can we do? Let's do let's let's do Underbelly of L.A. Mm-hmm. and we'll get powerhouse actors like Vince Vaughn and Colin Farrell. And <laughs> Colin Farrell, Vince Vaughn was Colin, Colin Farrell, Farrell was wasn't bad. Good. Rachel McAdams always good. She was always great. But Taylor, in that role, Taylor Kitsch didn't have anything to do. Nothing. Uh, I, I I still want him to be a movie lead, and it just mm-hmm. isn't going to happen. Yeah, but. Um, this is, is everything that we're looking for. Mahershala is fantastic in every single project he's ever done. Yeah. Going back, the first thing I saw him in was the 4400. Oh, was I remember that on show. On USA. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was That's the, right. He was the Vietnam vet. Yes. Or, no, excuse me, the Korea vet. Korea. The Korean vet that 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 showed up yeah. uh, 40 years later. Great in House of Cards. House of Cards, Luke Cage, yeah. uh, the first half of season one. Right. Um, Moonlight. All the, like all the films that he's yeah. been doing, hidden figures. Is uh, great. Yeah, he's 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 such a, and he's he's one of those actors that just commands your attention. It go okay. I was thinking about this this morning because I've watched the first two episodes of Mr. Mercedes on on audience, right? Because there are only two episodes in for season, the season two. season two. Yeah. 
And I don't know where it's going, and, and I'm already not as on board as I was season one, just because season one starts so amazing, and it's, it, it should again, it should have been a miniseries, I think. But I will watch anything Brendan Gleeson does. Oh, yeah. Same as Mahershala Ali. I will watch anything that guy does. Same as, I mean, there, was, there are a lot of actors out there that, for me, it doesn't matter the project, I will always yeah. tune in. Um, like this first man with Sean Penn. It's got Sean Penn. Yeah. It looks like a very depressing show. On Hulu about space and going to Mars, but it's Sean Penn. I'm gonna tune in. Jack Ryan. Do I need to see more Jack Ryan? No. Do I want to see John Krasinski as Jack Ryan? Fuck yes, I do. Yes. So for me, with Mahershala Ali in that trailer, did it show us a lot? No. Is it still? Is it going to be about a murder of a kid of some kind of thing? I think. I think I, that's I, where I, they're going to go. It looks like it. Yeah. And that's totally fine with me because I, I, that's a very dynamic storyline in, in in the South where it's very creepy in those backwoods and kind of situation. It's great. Mahershala Ali can do no wrong. Yeah. He's just, he's so good. Yeah. And I, I'm, a, I'm a, totally on board with you. It looks like they're getting back to what this was because True Detective season two was about four years ago. Yeah. yeah. So he's had time. And, yeah. They, they, and, and, and the head of HBO and Pizzolatto and everyone said like, we're, we're pumping the brakes. Yeah. We're going to let it, we're going to let the story come first mm -hmm. and then we will create this show. Yeah. And if they had rushed that into production, I, Mahershala wasn't the name that he is now. He mm -hmm. wasn't. And so I think that they have their cast. They have their story. Uh, I think it's it's the director of Green Room mm -hmm. uh, is directing the first couple episodes. Yeah, what's his name? I'm blanking on it. But if you haven't seen Green Room, it's incredible. It's pretty damn good. Uh, with 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 the late Antonio Yelchin and Patrick Stewart, who's yeah. come back to CBS All Access. There you and go. We, I'm we're gonna be talking that when that happens. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Soliner. Jeremy Soliner. Okay. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's he's directing the first couple episodes, I believe, of season three. And I, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's uh, yeah, it should should be solid. David Milch uh, is involved in some fashion. He was in a writers' room session at okay. some point. Um, yeah, I I want it to be good. Me too. We, we all do because season one might be top ten all time great oh. in television history. Yeah, in my opinion. So yeah. uh, NBC's Manifest drops an act uh, first act in advance of premiere. Thad, you watch this? I did not. Uh, yeah, they they want it to be lost. Okay. Uh, they're, they're they're going. I mean, it's the it's the plane. The plane has turbulence in midair, mm. and then when they land, uh, they've actually no. no. Uh, when when they land, it's been five and a half years. <laughs> so they so a turbulent flight from like Time an jump. island to New York City. Oh. Uh, they land, and then the FBI comes out, and they're like, "We haven't seen you for five and a half years." And so, uh, <laughs> your we're FBI guy is great. Yeah, uh, we're following. We're following a beautiful white woman. Uh -huh. I know it's hard to believe uh, yeah. on NBC television. Uh, we're following her. She's debating whether or not she should get married to her boyfriend, fiance person. Okay. Uh, she, her brother has a small child on the plane with them who is, has leukemia. And their other their other child goes with the wife and doesn't take the flight, like okay. uh, takes a later flight or whatever, as do her parents. And so when they meet up at the end of the nine, we, we, we just saw the first act, so okay. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll spoil it for you. Okay. Uh, we find out the mom died in the five and a half oh, years no. of like cancer or something. Okay. The daughter, the daughter has grown up. Okay. Like, so she's now a full teenager and the, the, no one on the plane has aged a day because uh, they've only been on the plane for what felt like four hours. Or right. Whatever. So it's interesting. It's a okay. very interesting concept. The, the the dialogue was a the dialogue and there on was the some, nose. yeah and there was there was some voiceover it, it just it didn't do do a lot for me at all okay um I, the the cast didn't it's a really very, it's a very pretty cast yeah it's 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 what you would expect on NBC drama yeah. these days I just it wasn't it wasn't catching me like a Lost did do you remember that show because this sounds from like okay there was the show where for two and a half minutes. The entire world passed out. Do you remember that show? I think it was on ABC, <gasps> like Flashpoint yeah. or something. Oh, what? Do you was remember that, that, was that show? Fla or Flash Forward? Flash Forward. Yes, I, think, I did that watch it, that show. It 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 did it got canceled. But yeah, yeah. I remember watching that because I I legitimately thought that may be one of the best. No, nope, not Flash Forward. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah, it yeah, is. yeah. Courtney B. Vance. Courtney B. Vance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Joseph Joseph Fine. Joseph Fines. Jack Davenport. Yeah. Who I. Who, who was on a, a criminally underrated CBS show, uh, Swingers. Swingers. Uh, back in the day. So uh, And Smash. I remember this show. And, and when the way you're describing Manifest sounds very similar to 
uh, flash forward. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. All right. Manifest. Is it? Is it? Is it a fall show? Is it's it a fall. Be? It's a okay. fall show. They've been they've been running promos for it like crazy, but then gotcha. they dropped this whole first act, which I thought was interesting because I think the promos kind of give it away. Like you see the FBI guy that says right. like, well, "You haven't been here for five and a half years." Uh, my FBI guy. I'm still working on it, but uh, I'll get there. I'll get there. But uh, I also don't yep. know why there's a, the FBI has been tasked with this. Right, but right. whatever. It's 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 network television. There has to be an FBI element sure. at all times. There's always a cop. There's at this always. Point, I don't even know what the difference between the FBI and the CIA is. Sometimes I'm I'm not really uh, sure. One but... wears a jacket <laughs> that has the letters of their organization on the back. The other one wears street clothes. And then when they say, "Are you in the are you in the CIA?" they say. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. You That's can't see it if you're listening so to this know. on podcast. You're not seeing me nod my head. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm. You just it's the nod. It's the subtle nod. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so uh, finally, before we move on to some picks of the week uh, and some Twitter questions, uh, Bob Costa said he wants out of his NBC Sports contract. Here's what I'm thinking: and He skipped the Olympics. There's people that are wanting to fill his shoes. Bob Costa is getting older. Yeah, he is. Um, he doesn't love to travel as much, I think, because he lo- he has got an amazing place on Pebble Beach. Um, is he doing the bus thing like John Madden, where he only he only takes a bus that's places? That's it. That's it. <laughs> no, no flights. Um, he doesn't want to. He, I think, what he wants, and I think what a, a lot of guys at his age now, um, in, in that have been around sports for whatever, is they they'd love to just do the, a show in their home and it just be the Bob Costa show. Yeah. And he does an hour, or he does like a, a Joe Buck thing on Audience Channel or something yeah. like that. He doesn't need the money. I don't think he wants to keep doing football over and over and over again because it gets exhausting. Yeah. I mean, it, and it's cold. <laughs> and yeah. it, Sunday Night Football, it gets cold in those yeah. cold locations. Yeah. Uh, and he's been doing it forever. I, I don't, if I was Bob Costas, I'd want out of the contract too maybe. Yeah, I mean, also he's been getting, I I think the the interesting thing here is he, he's been getting a lot more political in his commentary. Yeah. And he's actually commentating a lot more than mm-hmm. he used to. And he used to just be, I mean, the sports guys were just the sports just guys. Just sports guys. And, and he's, he's inserting his opinion, which I think is great. And I think it's in, in today's culture, I think everyone inserts their opinion into everything. Sure. So why not? Uh, and I think that if he if he goes out and does his own thing on maybe an HBO or Showtime, I could possibly see Netflix picking up right. like their own version of like a real sports with real Bob sp- Scott with yeah, Bob Costas. Correct, yeah. like a, like a, yeah, one of those one of those long form sports documentary shows. I could see uh, I could see like a streaming the service thing, do it. but yeah, yeah, I could see that. I could see him being he being more at the forefront of talking about sports in general as opposed mm-hmm. to just calling balls and strikes and and and. I think that he's he's over that. This article that I'm looking at here, he's been with NBC since 1979. Yeah. And his contract was going through Long 2021. Time. But the minute he said he wasn't doing the Olympics, because I think that that was kind of the turning point, because I, I don't think they, – they never explicitly said this, but I don't think he was going to be able to cover an Olympics in, in Pyeongchang mm-hmm. without talking about the world. Right. And without talking about – the situations that are happening in the world, he couldn't just say, oh, we're here to celebrate sports. Right. Like, it's happening in Pyeongchang. Mm-hmm. Um, so am I saying that right? Was it yeah. whatever it was? Pyeongchang was the Winter Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. So, or Summer Olympics, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that he... I think that he had to step away because I think he couldn't he couldn't do it again. Right. Because he'd already done Russia. I mean, we all remember the his, his eye thing. Yikes. Oof, Sochi. Poor guy. Poor Ooh, guy. God. Oh, that was the Winter Olympics. I'm an idiot. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Twenty fourteen was Sochi. Twenty sixteen was the Summer Olympics in Rio. Rio. Rio? Twenty eighteen P F Pyong. I was gonna say P F Chang, so I'm an no, idiot. No. Pyong Chang in South Korea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I think I think that he it's time and I, I really look forward to seeing what he's doing next because I think he's one of the best voices in the history of sports. Yeah, and I think that he, I'd like to see him branch. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm curious to see what he'll do. Yes. Uh, okay, let's do some Twitter questions. What do you think? Yeah. What have we got? What okay. have we got some. We got some. We got some Collider TV Talk tweets. Okay. So this one comes from Laura E at Elms Laura. Welcome back, Miss TV Talk. Well, we miss you, Laura. Uh, what do you watch when you want some alone time? Um, I love this show called Farity. It's on Golf Channel where he just interviews golfers. It's my alone show. I, I've been watching Condor on ah, Audience. Okay, uh, it's uh, based on three days, uh, based on the novel Six Days of the Condor, mm-hmm. and the film Three Days of the Condor. I'm really liking it. I got two episodes left. Okay. Um, great performance by Brendan Fraser, who's making a comeback right uh, now. Yeah. And uh, the Frasianisms. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's Jeremy Irons' son. I think. Yeah, uh-huh. uh, Max. 
Max Irons. Max Irons is the yeah. lead. Uh, He's good. Really good. It's a good. It's a good spy show. It's a slow burn spy drama. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the kind of stuff my wife doesn't care about. The and then I watch a lot of sci fi. The pilot was great though. The yeah. Pilot of Con- yeah. I saw the pilot. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. And it, it's it, it's gotten strong. It's good. it's eight ep- I'm eight into ten. Okay. So it's ten cool. episode ups. Cool. Uh, Michael Ratliff at MW Mike Eleven. Excited. Is it on YouTube or will it be a podcast? Can't wait. Both. Uh, we're going to be on YouTube and on. We have our own podcast feed. I'll tweet it out. You know, once or twice a week, whatever. And we'll tweet out the episode. Episodes are going to go up on Fridays. Yes. Uh, and they'll be on the on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Right. So you can check. You can uh, you can watch the episodes there on the podcast channel. Uh, Curious George at S Free Kumar sixty five. Thoughts on the twenty four prequel Young Jack Bauer spinoff series? No. Nah, no, I, 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 me, I, the the, uh, the 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 spinoff that they did last year, the twelve episodes with mm-hmm. um, with uh, the, with the younger kid yeah. from uh, Straight Outta Compton. Yeah, it, I'm, he's a great actor. Yeah, I love but that show Shirt just didn't work. Nah, and I and I'm a huge Twenty Four fan. Yeah. I watched every episode, all the all the the the, the weird even the later movies. seasons. The, yeah. yeah, the the TV movies. I'd yeah. love to maybe see one more TV movie with old Jack Bauer. Me too. Uh, maybe a Jack Bauer, Jack Ryan crossover. Whoa. They've been talking about it for a long time. Uh, but I think that they should leave this be. We don't. I don't need to see Jack Bauer become Jack Bauer. I'm tired of prequels for Me these too. franchise actors. Well, it's just I, uh. I have a quick opinion. Uh, I think we actually get into it. No, I'll get it. Um, Debbie Schechter, uh, she's great. A f- great follow on Twitter. Uh, she's always tweeted us a bunch of fun stuff. At Loha Debbie underscore Debbie. Well, what's your stance on superhero TV? We'll be watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season six when it turns to summer. Thoughts on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season five. I stopped watching as soon as they went to space. When I saw they went oh, to space, I was done. You missed out. You missed out. It was really solid. Really? Uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. season five was really good. Okay. I think the, the space arc was great. Okay. Uh, I When they came back to Earth, it wasn't as strong. Okay. But I think they ended well, and I'm... I'm a massive Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, apologist and I fan, yeah. and I think that it's a, it's a show that gets better a little bit every year, okay. so I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do next year. All right, Debbie, you've got Thad on your team. Uh, at Thad Williams is a huge Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. guy. I, you know, sometimes I just, I was I was watching so much TV that I had to start cutting things that I wasn't getting 100% out of, that, and that's, that's fair. Know. Uh, what's your expectation for True Detective Season 3? That was from Elliot. We already talked about that, at Duncan underscore Elliot. Uh, is there a TV show... You watch that no one would think you'd be into. I secret. I'm a secret admirer of the Amazing Race. That comes from Jonathan Peck at JPEC 1098. Uh, I mean, I watched The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise. I mean, I can't. Was, I can't. I can't do. I, yeah. I know too many people that work on those shows that I just can't. I can't make the leap. Yeah, but. Uh, I I watch a lot of So You Think You Can Dance. That's an Amanda show. <laughs> uh, have you Have you watched Making It yet? I have not on NBC. It's the it's it's a crafting uh, it's a crafting competition show Sounds starring amazing. Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman. Yeah, basically because oh, he's a woodworker. Because he's a woodworker, and yeah. they were on Parks and Rec together. Uh, it's adorable. Mm-hmm. It's really entertaining. It's well shot. Okay, well cut together. It's like six or seven episodes. We yeah. just watched another one last night. Uh, they're getting into the finale. It's nice. very entertaining. Because I, I I we watch I watch a lot of yeah. HDTV. All, Tons all, of HD all the time. Fixer Upper. Um, yeah. Uh, flip for flop. Um, we also watch Nailed It. You ever watch Nailed It? I've um, heard about Nailed It. I haven't seen it yet. It's ma- it's really funny, man. Yeah. You watch a couple episodes at a time. It's very good background TV. Sure. Uh, and also the first two seasons of Queer Eye are fantastic television. I haven't it's started so, the new. I haven't started the new run. I, I know it's an I'm just uplifting show. Ball my eyes out Put every you in a great episode. Great mood. Yeah. I balled a bunch. Yeah. 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 Uh, at Smaug Dude, uh, BCD, he tweets a lot. Good dude. He does tweet um, a lot. What would you do to convince the Jeopardy creators producer to hire Josh as the latest spokesperson host of the show after Trebek leaves? Um, I, I Listen, I was there. Yeah. I was there yesterday. Uh, I'm going to release a video of just... <laughs> there you go. I don't, Thanks, know, I don't know where in the frame this is if you're watching on the, the, the podcast side. Yeah. But. That's got the Josh McCougar for Jeopardy, the big sign up. I mean, it's, um, I'm also blocking your shot, so it's not really working. <laughs> We've got a couple cool videos coming out. Uh, I've been talking to a production company about a couple cool things. Things are in the works. Just keep tweeting at Jeopardy and hashtag at Josh McCougar for Jeopardy, the number four. Uh, I'm going to release a video. I'm going to do a little like a vlog style thing, which I rarely do uh, on the Josh McCougar Show channel about my experience yesterday at Jeopardy. I, I want to go into it full. I'll probably talk about it on Collider Live next week, but it was a pretty amazing experience. Yeah. Dad knows the story. Yeah. And we've got some videos coming out here on Collider that we shot last week that are fantastic. Yes. Um, this one comes from at Smort Noise. 
at smart underscore noise. I'm like, that's hysterical. <laughs> that's a great Twitter handle. Uh, do you think Brooklyn Nine Nine will last more than one season on NBC? I Hashtag Collider TV. Talk. He means Hulu, Hulu right? Hulu. Because it's it's not on. Or wait, who saved it? Hulu. I thought NBC. Wait, did NBC save it? Maybe NBC. Oh. It? Yeah. Was it NBC? It was because it was on Fox. Yeah. And then. NBC picked it up. Okay. Yeah, because they produced it. Because it's part of it's a universal television right. program. So that was an easy pickup for them. Yeah. Um I, right. I would hope so. I love Brooklyn Nine Nine. I love yeah. it. Yeah. It's it's so funny. It's it's all consistently funny it's every so freaking season. Funny. I, yeah. I don't know if it will survive. Yeah. I are they pairing it with like Good Place or something in the fall? Right. Uh, I, I'm not sure where they're putting it on the schedule, but uh I think that it should be a Thursday, Friday show, something. I mean a Thursday, maybe a Wednesday night show. Yeah. yeah. It's a weekday show. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, da, 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 at, at Boss Moon Pie, Dylan Todd, don't play with me, Makuga. My emotions can't handle this right now. I'm not playing with you. We're doing TV talk. We're it's here. happening. It's happening. Hashtag. We're doing it right now. Uh, Mr. Mercedes season two seems to be too Stephen King. Is that good? Not for me. That's why I'm, I'm a little skeptic on season two right now. Are you watching Castle Rock? I've been hearing a lot about Castle Rock on Hulu. I haven't no. started Stephen it yet. Stephen King and I don't really have what yeah. you call a good relationship. Yeah. yeah. Did you watch 11 on Hulu? I did. Cause Cause it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. Yeah. But it was okay. James Franco was okay. Yeah. I like the female lead. She was fantastic. Yeah, she was. Who was that? I didn't <sighs> look that up. She was really good. Uh, this is my favorite question. This one comes from at King Than MTTM, Ethan King. A lot of people are saying that the new season of Better Call Saul, that it has surpassed Breaking Bad and is better. I personally don't think so, although I still love and think both shows are great. What do you guys think? BCS better than BB? Uh, I'm going to say no, but... Here's my theory on Better Call Saul. Had they said this is a prequel to Breaking Bad, I think it would have three times the amount of people watching it, th four times the amount of traction. They just said it was like a, a Saul yeah. thing. And I don't think people jumped on board early enough. And, and I can't convince people hard enough. If you like Breaking Bad... If you're Bad, not watching it, you're making a mistake. This show is absolutely... The last episode was amazing. Oh, man. Gus the, Spring is killing it. Yeah. I mean, this show is really Lit, well done. Good pun. Yeah, you like yeah, that? Yeah. Uh, and 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 obviously, uh, you know, um, Saul Goodman. He's not even Saul Goodman yet. He's still Jimmy. No, McGill. he's still Jimmy. And I I love everything that they're doing on that show. Mm -hmm. This season is really, really coming together strong. There there was a. I'm not going to give anything away, but there was a there was a Breaking Bad tie-in cameo an okay. episode or two ago uh, that I didn't see coming. I should have, but I didn't. Two episodes ago, uh, Gus. Uh, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, okay. Yeah, yeah. We I can talk it. about that later yep, in a yep. breakout kind of thing. But yep. uh, it's it it blew my mind because I should have seen it. I should have seen it from a mile away because they've been teeing it up all season. Like this is going to be Breaking Bad as close as we can get. Right. And I, my mind was still thinking with Jesse and Walt, right. and I I didn't open my mind up enough to remember that there were some fantastic characters that we 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 didn't spend enough time with that now we can and that's the whole beauty of the Better show in, in, in the first place is seeing Mike and and Jimmy yeah. uh, as they as they evolve and Gus and the magical woman yeah. and it's just if you ever if you fantastic if you were watching a show and you think oh a spin-off should be good to this the the blueprint right now in my opinion is Better Call Saul yeah. As far as if a show that is a spinoff or a prequel, Better Call Saul is the blueprint that kills it. Let's do one more, and then let's go into some uh, our final thoughts here. Um, Danny Ramirez at DRMZ, Nachos for Life. Love nachos. Yeah. Hashtag Collider TV Talk with all show options available thanks to the ever-increasing networks. What determines a hit series, the channel, and or streaming service? Story, actors, actresses in it, ratings? Glad to have Cl Hashtag Collider TV Talk back. I mean, you kind of hit it all in the head. It's a little bit of everything. A little bit. Of, it's got to be. Yeah. I mean, anything can hit. Uh, obviously, the service that you're on gives it some clout. But, I mean, Mr. Mercedes was fantastic last year. I thought the breakout show uh, on Hulu was Marvel's run as well, Marvel's Runaways. Yeah. Hulu originals have been up and down. But they're getting the new one, like I said, with Sean Penn. Yeah. Uh, First Man. You know, I mean, there are still some network shows out there that are fantastic. Uh, I just think network... It plays it very safe, and they're kind of just like, listen, we're going to make the TV shows cheap. If some of them hit, they do. If they don't, they don't, yeah. as far yeah. as comedies go. So um, 
I mean, they have to they they have to go to a much wider audience. I mean, yes. the the network you're still playing not uh, playing to the masses might be the wrong phrase, but you're still you're still having to appease a wide group of people. Mm-hmm. The the streaming services they're going for the niche audience and the cable cable as well. They're they're not necessarily looking for a show that crosses all four quadrants. I mean, this is us is an outlier in today's landscape. Yes. It used to be the norm. Yes. All television had to hit the moms and the dads and the kids and the grandparents. They had to they had to fall into something something for everyone. Sure. And nothing has to do that anymore no. on except for network television. And so they're kind of working at a disadvantage yeah. in a lot of ways where they're coming up with some really great shows, but then they have to make sure that they that they check off all the boxes. And if you're on a streaming platform or an HBO or YouTube originals or whatever it is, you you can just go straight down the middle. You say, I'm, I'm making a show for 35-year-old dudes who love sports yep. and – Here's Cobra Kai. Correct. Like it's it. You don't have to. You don't have to appease the masses. No. Um, it, Netflix too. When they Netflix said they were going to introduce some ads, I'm fine with that. If that means I get more TV that I love or that some of my series stay on the air somewhere, I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. And again, networks have to appease the advertisers. They still have to hit. You know, they can't be showing boobs and some mom is watching TV at 9:30 and her son's up watching it with her. It's there are a lot of things that. Network just cannot do. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean there aren't great network shows. I mean, was Quantico great? No. Is This Is Us great? Yes. Yeah. It, 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 it's a it's a it's it's always a guessing game with network TV. 100%. What's going to hit? Because they are still worried about the ratings. Yeah. Because they have advertisers to please. I, the one thing I don't want to see with Netflix is if Netflix goes with an advertiser based model, I, I don't really know. I mean, they have such a high subscriber rate. Yeah. And all their subscribers are paying a premium already. Sure. And so I don't know if that's really a good play for them because you look at you look at if their compet if their competition is HBO right more more so than Hulu then HBO is advertising I mean HBO Go or HBO Now might be a little bit more expensive than Netflix sure but you get that you get that ad free premium experience 100 if Netflix goes the way of Hulu it loses a little bit of its luster I agree. As much as I do, I'm with you. I love advertising. Sure. And I love I, commercials. I, I do. I, I love commercials. There are always yeah. great commercials, and the business model behind commercials makes a lot of sense to mm-hmm. me from a business standpoint. And I, but I think that, I think that those premium services need to kind of set themselves apart because mm-hmm. now you're seeing even even cable shows like I last night while I was watching Better Call Saul, they were advertising a premium version of AMC, yeah. where you can buy AMC and watch it without commercials. Right. For that Lodge 49 show, which yeah. I, I couldn't get into. I, not, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, back to what you were saying earlier. 112263, yeah. the female lead was Sarah Gaden. Godden. Okay. Uh, she's in True Detective Season 3. Whoa! As uh, uh, Elisa Montgomery. There you uh, go. She's credited in the first episode. I don't know if she dies or okay. if she's like the female lead, but we'll be seeing more of her. Uh, that, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, sorry, where's Succession? I want to uh, figure out what the actress's name that played the mom in... Oh, she was also Grace and Elias Grace. Who was? Uh, this actress. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Which I haven't, I haven't watched, but... So, let's see. Okay, so Succession. Not Shiv. She's... I can't... I should. I, what I should have looked up was Rectify. I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a moron. This is this is great. <laughs> this is great. Great radio. Great, great, is, great dead air I, right here. I even like. Uh, I click on Rectify and I see the trailer and I get really excited about it. Well, while you're looking that up, if anyone is, if, if all the fans, if you guys want to tweet at us with the shows that you want to hear long form reviews on, let us know. Yeah, please. Hashtag Collider TV Talk. We're not going to be able to get to everyone, but yeah. if we're watching a show and you want to hear us talk about it, we can do a breakout review. We'll do. It. Uh, Jay Smith Cameron is her name. Uh, she's the actress that played the mother on Rectifying is in Succession. She's fantastic. Good to know. Okay. Uh, let's do a pick of the whenever we were on before until now. <laughs> it's a, uh, not really a week so much as it's been like seven or eight months. months. Yeah, it's been a pick while. Pick of the six months. Um, so we've been off for a while here, Thad. So yeah. why, give me give me a couple picks. All right, uh, I'll give you a couple since picks. Since we've been gone, I can't breathe for the first time. Uh, Still <laughs> watching TV talk. Uh, this summer, my favorite show, mm-hmm. 
was Barry. Yeah. Uh, I, Barry, <sighs> Barry blew me away. I was just going to say, blew my mind. Blew my mind. Yeah. It. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, I I was lucky enough to go to a screening of the f of the final uh, of the season finale nice. and with a long nice. cast and crew uh, conversation and listen to everyone talking about it and listen to everyone praise Henry Winkler. Yes, and I, I it was I I didn't know what to expect right. with that show. I think that it delivered on more levels than I ever could have imagined. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be a lot fluffier than it was. Okay. And I think that Hader and Alec Berg put together a, a, a multifaceted drama. It felt like that the was a real world show. It felt like the real world. It felt like that guy is in your acting class or whatever. Yeah. It really did. Yeah. And he's really a, he's, really a murderer. And uh, Henry Winkler is awesome. Yeah. He I, is so good. He's also like the nicest person on the planet. Yeah. But for sure. Um, yeah. So, other than that, uh, what else did I watch this summer? I watched. Did you watch? Uh, the I new watched the new Orange is the New Black. Okay. I'm still on that show. I really liked the new season. Okay. My what I loved about that show, real quick, is they figured out that th they might have a villain character here and there, mm -hmm. an antagonist for for the 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 main crew. The real villain in that series is the prison system. And they figured that out. For profit. They figured it out. They went for profit. Uh, without spoiling a lot, they they shift some stuff again at the end of the end of this season. They're in they're in maximum security all season. There so we go. get to see the Ooh, crazy bad. bad, like real bad people yeah. and and real bad guards. Okay. And a real bad system that's just letting people live there. And I, I'm not gonna over politicize it all, but the show doesn't pull any punches. Okay. And I think that by putting them in max this year, they were able to do stuff where before it kind of felt like fun, fun and right, games. Right, right, right. Uh, they, they, security, yeah. they went, they went for it this year, and I cool. applauded them for it. I think that was really strong. Right on. Uh, really liked Westworld. I know you're not a Westworld no, fan, yeah. Uh, but Westworld season two was everything I wanted it to be. It was bigger and better, more cohesive. Okay. I think they had a better story to tell and a stronger story to tell. And I really liked where it ended. I'm. So excited for season three. Okay. If you want to catch up, uh, Perry and I did a uh, a recap of the series of the season finale. It's okay. on the it's on the main channel. Uh, go look it up. It's uh, the whole finale explained, and it's uh, it's a great deep dive into how all this weird time jumpy stuff kind of works. Cool. Uh, and there's a couple there's a number of articles on the website about that as well. Gotcha. Uh, and then we've talked about Better Call Saul. Also on the nonfiction front. Uh, magic for Humans. Have you watched this yet? No, but I love Magic. I it, well, and I love Justin Willman. Okay. Uh, he, he's an alumnus of my college. Yeah. Uh, used to come back to perform every year. A uh, lot, of, lot of mutual friends. He's hilarious. He's really, really good at what he does. He blows my mind. Where is this? It's on Netflix. Oh, it's a six episode comedic magic show. I love on Magic Netflix. so much. Oh. And it's it, it reminds me a lot of... I go down these magic wormholes on YouTube. Oh, uh, man. It reminds a lot of Penn & Teller's bullshit. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of that kind of style. Okay. Uh, but strictly magic. Hmm. And so it's it's the kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah. Also, if you're not watching Penn & Teller's Fool Us every now and then on CW, we'll blow your mind every week. I love uh, Fool Us. Yeah. It's so entertaining. And I, Allison Hannigan's the host for reasons I don't understand. I have no idea. But she's Boy, into it. Boy, can she not host a show, but I, Whatever. I don't care. Because I don't care. It's, she says two words, and I'm yeah. like, show me the magician. Show me that magic guy. And the magician is awesome. Yeah. Every time, they're really entertaining, and then Penn and Teller do a trick at the end, and I've been a fan of Penn and Teller ever since they showed up on SNL in the 80s. And so it's... Magic for Humans can't recommend it enough. It's okay. a quick show, twenty five minutes. Gotcha. But it, it's uh, produced by Absolutely Tim and Eric, ah. and so it's got a lot of funny humor because nice. uh, Justin kind of lives in that world. He's like half comedic, half com half comedian, half magician. Right. Uh, if you're in LA, he tours all the time. As opposed to David him. Blaine, who is all comedian all the time. Oh god, I can't <laughs> I can't do the David Blaine too I'll, much. I'll give you two uh, because and because I, I talked way too long. No, yeah. no, no. Um, I'll give you two because I'm I. A lot of times lean towards comedian, comedian towards comic comedies, uh, things of that nature uh, that people don't watch anywhere. Right. I love Detroiters. I talked about it already. I love Nobodies. Have you seen Nobodies? It's on Paramount Network. Oh, you've been telling me about this one. It's Melissa it got McCarthy. Canceled. Yeah, they, unfortunately. They canceled it. But I, I two seasons two of seasons. Nobodies. Two Melissa seasons. McCarthy's producer. It's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Takes place here in L.A. It's about these writers uh, that are that are uh, groundlings. 
alums and all their friends are famous, but they aren't, and they can't get anything right. And it's 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 just such a well done show. Uh, those two comedies, I can't. Uh, there's also two other shows on Paramount Network that are pretty well done: Bad Teachers and Younger. And Younger yeah. has Hillary Duff in it, and I'll be a Hillary Duff fan till the day I friggin' die. Okay. <laughs> And both shows are great. They are really well done. Uh, Paramount Network releasing some awesome stuff. I still haven't watched that Kev- Kevin Costner show on Paramount Network. No, I heard it was really good. All, all, all very good shows. Yeah. That's it. That's our first edition of Collider TV Talk back here. We're going to we're gonna try and get some Sinead DeFries and some Emma Fife to call in next time. We're, we're, again, we're just we're doing the show again. We're on the podcast yeah. channel. We're doing a full podcast every week. We're going to have so much stuff coming out on this channel. Thad and I are leading the charge. Uh, Thad... Thanks for doing this with me, man. Oh, I'm I, so excited. Yeah, this is this is this is fantastic. Yeah. I love not working for an hour and a half and just talking about television. Because <laughs> we talk about TV in the office all the time. About the time they put mics in front of our faces. Exactly. Uh, there's so much TV coming out this fall. Uh, you know, Emmys are right around the corner. The marvelous Mrs. Maisel. We're gonna have a countdown here on the show. Oh. I'm just gonna start crossing off my calendar until that. Cannot season. wait. Can't wait. Uh, thank you guys for for listening to the show, for watching the show. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga, Thad Williams at Thad Williams. You guys can see my show, the Josh McCuga Show, on my YouTube channel. Um, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. Hashtag at Josh McCuga for Jeopardy. You guys can just become part of the revolution. God, this thing is hard to pick up. <laughs> uh, just become part of the revolution. There's the big sign. Uh, there it's we way go. too big for the frame. There we go. It's fine. Uh, uh, and uh, as always, put down the book. Pick up the remote.